little bit of a walk outside. You can see them in the distance. They're waving their arms, saying goodbye. Musky Bad coming in with his boots, saying hello to the fans. We got Team Mellis versus Team Red Mercy here. I think this is the winner's bracket, if I'm not mistaken. This will be a best of three. It looks like it's going to be the semifinals, I believe. Um, band's already coming out. Zed Band against Red Mercy. Typical Red Mercy Band. Um, he's really, really strong on that Zed. Twisted Fate banned out as well. And Lysandra. All probably targeted towards that mid top lane. As expected, general bans. Good on uh, Team Mellis and Box Stripe to get these bans. As for the other side, Jinx taken away from Mellis. Probably a comfort pick of hers. Uh, Katarina taken away from whatever mid laner is on the blue team. And Aurelia taken away from that top lane. Uh, as expected, if you play Aurelia, you're probably comfortable with Jax. So the Jax pickup is much expected. Uh, as we saw earlier today, I, Kevin Tran, played a lot on Thresh. So I'm pretty sure he's going to stick with his comfort pick. Would have been smart to take that Thresh away from him. So he would have to choose something else. But I'd probably target it more to Red Mercy. Because he's most skill inclined player on that team. Kara picking up the Nasus. I believe... I've, I think I saw Nasus earlier today. Probably wasn't Kara, but uh, Nasus, I don't think is as efficient as he once was. Takes him a while to get going. And what Challenger and Diamond players always say is that it's not worth to wait for that late game. You definitely want to pick up some kind of champion that can survive the early game better. And Nasus is just too squishy to do that. Um, previously, Tristana had a early t had a hard time in the early game, but. Um, from a general perspective, it's bearable. It's laneable. She can survive to a point where she can become this late game god. Whereas Nasus can't do that as much. As much very prone to ganks, and Jax is definitely going to face roll that lane. Uh, Jax only gets stronger, and there isn't a point in the game where Nasus is better than Jax. Um, so hopefully, we're going to see Kleptomaniac doing some ganks and some teleporting um, to help out the bot lane maybe even the dragon pressure but as well some split pushing i want to see Jax do some split pushing um braum coming out really good pick really defensive support um don't, don't exactly know how he fares against thresh because i don't see braum that often but i'd assume that he does fairly well uh considering he counters adc's adc's pretty hard with his shield so that's very good Jarvan is an ex incredibly strong jungler. By far, in fact, the best jungler. Like, there's no really other champion to contest. Lee Sin has been nerfed over and over and over again, so I'm not surprised. Um, just, like, to see him is... You have to be skilled to play Lee Sin. Lee, Lee Sin requires a lot of skill, as does Jarvan. But Jarvan, you can get away with a lot more mistakes than you can with Lee Sin. Lee Sin has to be really, really well executed to be efficient. Uh, Mel is picking up the Lucian, another comfort pick of hers. Um, if you don't know, uh, Mel is, does main ADC uh, and Red Mercy does main mid lane. Both very infamous players on both sides of the team. Uh, not exactly sure. Box Tribe going to finish off that top lane or that mid lane most likely with the sustain. And, and, and quite a bit of magic damage coming in from the side of blue team. Got Braum with just a, just a tad of magic damage as well as Mel is Putting in a little bit of damage on her own with Lucian, but mainly Vladimir is going to be doing lots of damage with his ultimate if Jarvan can get a lot of people in his Cataclysm as well as Braum connecting that group tension that might be occurring. But we're going to see Red Mercy on Azir. What a skill inclined champion. You need to be really, really good to play Azir. And I think Red Mercy has what it takes, definitely. Um, wow, I'm excited to see Red Mercy play. He makes a lot of mid lane videos, trying out different mid laners. I remember once upon a time when Braum first came out, he tried Braum mid lane. It doesn't really work out that well, but uh, he gave it a shot. He did pretty decent, but definitely Braum, Braum, like Braum and Nami, they both stay in the bot lane. Um, actually, Braum top does work, actually. If you go ADC Braum top, that does work. Um, but in, when this game is going to be uh, picking up the exhaust, definitely going to be the support. Going to be heading into the game in about 30 seconds. We're going to have a delay. I want to take the moment to talk about the win conditions for both teams. On purple side, it's all poke. There's all poke. If Kevin can land a good hook, maybe Kara as Nasus can come in, give that little bit of a team fight feel. But mainly, we're going to be poking down with Devastated and Red Mercy. But Red Mercy as well on Azir can pull. Like Red Mer Azir is a champion 
fits in a lot of different compositions. He's very flexible, and with the recent bug fixes and reworks, Azir is doing very well for himself in the meta. Um, and in this team comp particularly, he's going to do very well as well. Uh, as for the blue team, all team fight. I love seeing a pick versus team fight comp because um, a pick comp does generally well if all the players are on the same page and doing extraordinary things. However, for blue team, uh, team fight comps can come out of nowhere and take the game away from you. So if Red Mercy and his shot calling isn't going to be that as a as effective on Azir, or maybe he might be lackluster on the champion, or maybe his shot calling has faltered from maybe a few losses here and there. I'm not exactly sure where he is in the standing. I think this is the winner's bracket, so Azir, Red Mercy is okay. But if his shot calling falters for just a brief second, uh, the team fight comp from Melis' side is going to take the game definitely from right under their feet. So Red Mercy has to be careful with his pick, um, poke comp. Um, Definitely. One technique that I saw yesterday on Azir is what I call the sandwich. Um, you start sieging on the turret, and as Azir, you set up a turret behind you. It's the first thing, first time I've ever seen that, and it was exceptionally well done. We have uh, Bad coming in, joining me finally after a short break. He got his fix with Danky Nut Nugs. Um, they hung out for a brief time, chatted about the games. Danky Nugs, unfortunately, out of the tournament. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying that I was hanging out with some danky nugs, if you know what I'm saying, which yeah. I wasn't doing, of course. That got would a, be horrible. Got a team fight poke game over here. Ooh, Box Stripe in this game. Box Stripe, if you guys don't know, is the actual organizer of most of these uh, solo queue hero tournaments. So oh, pretty exciting. Yep, that is actually that's Andrew. Klo that is Andrew. I did not. I did not recognize him. I didn't know his Ooh. gamer tag. Was, oh my god. This is gonna be a good game. We've yes. got Red Mercy on Azir as well. Dang. I'm I was just talking about one. the uh, the the sandwich where you siege the turret and you set up a turret behind yep. you. We saw that yesterday yep. at the UTLA tournament. Mm -hmm. um, very well executed. And I think Red Mercy knows that tactic as well. He's going to be creating a poke siege nightmare yep. for Melis' team, definitely. Yep. Um, and uh, it's going to be box stripe in the mid lane on that Vladimir as well, which I'm not sure how that does against the Zier. I think he'll be okay, but I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of kill pressure yeah, there. Right, right. And uh, Red Mercy actually taking heal, probably not expecting the ignite coming out from Box Stripe yeah, his, on his own. Absolutely, but that does mean that Box Stripe probably wants to go aggressive um, in that lane. Definitely wants to try to dominate Red Mercy a little bit. And if we see Red Mercy falter in his confidence, his shot calling will suffer. Yeah, absolutely. That's something he's going to have to be very wary about. Uh, Red Mercy, of course. Such a strong contender in every single one of these Soul Kid Hero tournaments. Definitely not a, uh, a new addition to the uh, final bracket. These guys are well aware. Of course, Andrew, this is the first tournament I've actually seen him play in in these Soul Kid Hero tournaments. So he's uh, been on the sidelines waiting for his moment. I remember uh, when Zot and I won the uh, Soul Kid Hero tournament, actually, when our, we were winning our final game. He was sitting in the room with us, listening to the way that we were playing, the way we were shot casting or er, shot calling, everything like that. And uh, obviously, he's got a lot to prove here. Absolutely, uh, he started off as a little scuttle crab, and I know that he's been the team captain for a few of these kind of social events or some of these tournaments. He's been the team captain, yep. not exactly, not always taking first or leading his team to victory, but he definitely has that shot calling persona. Yeah, the leadership role for yes, sure. Yes, definitely. His personality, yeah, absolutely. Melis as well, also uh, a super strong contender. One of the best AD carries that consistently goes to these uh, League of Legends events. Um, I'm very proud of my Shaco play, and uh, Melis actually one of the few people, even outside of solo queue, that has ever really given me trouble in terms of just a split pushing AD carry that knows how to duel against the Shaco. And uh, that is not a compliment I give over lightly, so uh, really strong contender as well. Cannot give her any uh, any room to <laughs> struggling with the moving the champion orders oh man jeez. okay here we go i think uh you definitely have had some dank yeah notes. i think so too man jeez. uh interesting oh here we go vulgar oh going for the queue my mind's telling me no but my 
Oh, jeez. Had to start Lantern. That's horrible. Yeah. I would be really upset if I had to start Lantern on Thresh. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he did avoid that level one kill. So, uh, a little bit of confidence, maybe a little bit too much cockiness coming out from Red Mercy's team here. I wanna, I wanted to ask you about something I've been thinking about for a long time, and that's the utility page. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I thought Brent was laughing. I'm mistaken there. A little bit of uh, anticlimactic laughter, but um, a lot of different champions. I used to see nine zero twenty one on Hecarim, and there's like different ways that sometimes champions take advantage of that utility page. We see the biscuits coming out from Azir. Uh, what do you think the utility hat page has to offer for lanes that are not support? I'm not sure if he went deep, deep. Yeah, okay. So he's actually got twenty one points into the offensive tree. And yeah. The way that I can tell that is because. Uh, he does have that 39 AP. You can't do that without getting uh, deep into the tree. So, mm. just the biscuits themselves, it's just so cost effective if you're really focusing on that early game. The only difference that would really trade is that he's not going to have the increased duration on the uh, on the blue buff. So, obviously, just valuing that over the. Uh, he doesn't like. He's not one of those champions that has mana problems, and his cooldown is going to be capped anyways. So. I think he uh, just really does prefer those biscuits. And of course, it does give 20 health immediately when you pop it mm. and a little bit of mana as well. So good at surviving against those all-ins from something like an Ignite. Definitely focus towards that early game. I honestly feel like Red Mercy has... He has the weight on his shoulders. And I think the phrase that I, I can use a lot better here is, my team is too heavy. Um, Nasus is going to be struggling for the rest of his life in the top lane, 11 and 4 yeah. already. Jax is not one person that you want to mess with, and I was saying this earlier when you stepped out for a bit. Um, Jax is like, why pick Nas Nasus into Jax? Jax was first pick, and then Nasus picked second. That is a horrible decision for, for you to make, because Jax just scales for the entire game, and you... Nasus will never outscale Jax. Like there's no perfect, there's no world where that happens because the Counter Strike will just stop the first amplified attack, and that's it. What what does Nasus have after that? There's yeah. there's nothing. The only way he'd be able to stand even somewhat toe to toe would be if he got a free lane phase and just farmed his Q forever. But that's <laughs> not gonna happen. Yeah. Jax, of course, uh, a very strong lane bully in those uh, situate like in the lane matchups that he thrives in. He's a very strong bully, as you see. He just does so much damage to carry right there, even through the minion lane. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to give Red Mercy a little bit of, a lot less to work with in his plans that he has for objectives. He has less resources to use in his in his arsenal. And here we have Kara stepping up a little bit over the line. Here comes Jarvan help out with the gank. Hopefully he's going to land a very nice EQ combo here. But the flash does come out. The standard swag flag coming out. Uh, Jack's taking a little bit low by the turbo. Great gank. Yeah, and they're gonna shove that into the tower, most likely. Get a free base on Jax. Actually, he might deny it, which is the better play here. Up If he freezes that wave, which it looks like he's doing much better because he doesn't need to blow his own teleport there and uh, will still sustain up with the flask pots that he uh, has started off with. Absolutely, and Jarvan's gonna have to stay in that lane. That's why Jax is denying the... CS there. Boxstripe taking dangerously low. Jarvan hiding in the shadows, hopefully to make a play. Lisa on the other side of the counter gank. I really want to see how this play goes out. Yeah, but here the, we go. Here's the, oh, the Q does miss by Lisa. Great flash from Klotz. Uh, Baletti Hero going in a little bit, taking, doing a lot of damage onto Vibert, but great counter damage if that's even a word used in the league scene. But uh, that was good play by Jarvan and good flash from Klotz. Yeah, Bloody Hero, that name sounds very familiar to me. I might be thinking of Bloody Surge. All the same though. Uh, definitely showing that he knows how to play that Jarvan. Holding onto his EQ combo. Box Stripe forced into the pool under tower there. He'll have to go back and uh, Red Mercy will continue to grow his lead over that mid lane. That doesn't seem like a horrible thing for... Yeah, Vlad, Vlad doesn't scale up really until level 9, and that's yeah. when his real power spike, and he does start to become that very uh, damaging champion. Absolutely, and there's nothing really he can do at this point, except just farm, play it safe, and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. 
So, we do see Kleptomaniac looking to set up a gank here. Jarvan's here again. Great, uh, great positioning by Bloody Hero there. Hopefully, they're going to get this kill into Kevin Tran. But uh, the exhaust does come out. Smite as well. Hook onto Mela's great angle there. But uh, not enough damage onto the, uh, Kevin Tran. Relic Shield pretty much saving his life. Giving him that extra boost of health that he needed. As well as the biscuits. But nevertheless, great presence on the map. Yeah, we can tell that both of these teams are putting a lot of emphasis onto the early game, uh, making sure that their jungles are everywhere that they need to be. Lee Sin, of course, falling a little bit behind in that sort of matchup. Jarvan going for those boots five to continue his pressure all the way around the map. Man, look at that damage in the top lane. That Level is... six hit, and the pressure immediately applied. I think after his leap strike is up, he's just going to go back in. I, I, I wouldn't expect anything less. Kara is absolutely powerless, and Lee Sin can't do anything. I'm pretty sure they can't even 2v1 jacks at this point. Um, the auto attacks from both champions is just not effective enough in holding down that Jax. But maybe there's a Maokai jungle of some kind. Something to lock down that Jax from moving at all. Maybe they would have had a better chance, but two auto attack champions. Two auto attack reliant champions. Oh, oh. Mid lane. Red the, Mercy is level 6. The ultimate from Red Mercy coming out, blocking out that Jarvan, but Box Stripe is doing tons of damage. Red Mercy is going to have to eat over the wall. Great job there. Um, saving his life, and his team came to back him up a little bit. So the thing about Nasus is he actually plays very similar to how that Morgana mid plays, where uh, or a Karthus mid plays, where in a, in a lot of matchups, he actually just basically gives a free lane to the opponent. And that is something you do not want to do against a Jax. You can see, like, how are they going to deal with this guy? Lee Sin, not strong enough to help out that Nasus. Uh, maybe just trying to help him push out the lane. But Vladimir, on the other hand, also does very well against Nasus when it gets to the late game. One of the few champions, along with Jax, who is able actually to 1v1 a Nasus late game. If I were to be in Red Mercy's eyes, if I was in, if I was Red Mercy right now, I would ask Lee Sin to focus on mid lane, get Vladimir into the ground completely behind, and get Red Mercy massive. That seems to be like the most op efficient plan that they can plan for, because that puts Vladimir super behind. Probably he's not going to do anything until level 13. His power spike is going to be missed because he's so behind. Let Jax do his thing because at this point there's, there's nothing you can do to stop him. If Azir gets big, he could possibly deal with Jax. Um, but that's just, to me, that just seems like the most efficient item, uh, efficient path for Red Mercy and the jungler to work together against that mid lane. Yeah, and I, because the way that Red Mercy is playing that lane, keeping it very pushed to tower, that means that him and his jungler are going to need to, uh, work against the Jarvan as well. They're going to need to get deep into that tower. You can see Red Mercy not coming as ahead on those trades as he once was. Boxstripe does have his uh, revolver, which will help him sustain, but look at that Azir damage. Never mind. He just needed more soldiers down. And uh, yeah, we need to see Lee Sin helping out Azir, helping Red Mercy snowball his game. But uh, he plays Lee Sin the way I play Lee Sin. I hate Lee Sin. I don't know. I hate jungling in general. I'm just not good at it. I just don't know how to do it. it you need it. You need like a sixth cent for it. Whoa! Mel is getting hooked out. The hook does connect Flay as well. They are both level six. Here comes the Alda. Does manage to hit, manage to hit on Mela's exhaust coming out, so she's not gonna be able to do that much damage. Double gap coming out. Typical trick to G reference. Here comes the teleport from Hugh Boy. The, they're gonna get that thresh, and that's gonna be a great teleport. They're hopefully gonna continue the chase, but. Not going to be enough. Jarvan good. here as well. Probably the dragon is the idea. Oh, well, there it is. They just took dragon. Yeah, so good <laughs> flay by Thresh actually uh, preventing the stun from landing onto Ezreal, saving his life here. Uh, and Nasus obviously not able to TP up and follow back. Whoa! Oh, great ultimate from Azir. Denying that Jarvan and actually falling to the Ezreal who picked up the cleanup down the side there. What a great janitor that was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just showing the... Oh, oh. Box Stripe waiting in the wings! He really wants that Azir, and so does Hugh Boy. They're gonna try to jump on that Ezreal. The, the, the Counter-Strike does land. Hugh Boy's gonna trade with Red Mercy here. He's gonna have to jump out, because Lee Sin is right there on the side. Teleport coming out from Nasus. He wants to redeem himself. The Ezreal does fall. Lee Sin picking up that Jax kill, and both teams are just gonna probably walk away from each other. Vibert still wants some, but doesn't know how to insect. He doesn't even have his kick up anyways. So, actually, questionable buy and questionable TP. I don't think it was necessary. I think he really should have just kind of 
stuck up there in the top lane, used Jack's leaving to just kind of use that time to get himself out of lane. And uh, the Sheen early, I'm not sure what he's trying to, what his game plan is here, to be honest. Maybe just grouping up with the team, trying to take towers and melee range, I don't know. It's hard to say. Regardless, uh, it is now the time for Melee's team to answer back after all of those abilities were used. We need to see some sort of counterplay by them to uh, keep themselves in an advantageous position this game. Absolutely. I honestly think this meta fits, this new, this new dragon lifestyle fits Jax so well. With the boost and attack damage and ability power, it just makes his whole kit feel like this disgusting monster that you don't want to see underneath your bed. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the uh, game does, on average, go a little bit longer because uh, of those new towers, that sort of thing. The game has sort of grown a little bit. Melee gets caught. Azir gonna look to pick up this kill. Meles is gonna probably be saved by Kleptomaniac here. And Box Stripe coming in for his revenge kill. Ultimate, these ultimates are just really on point from Red Mercy, denying anybody in his comfort zone. Yep. He needs to get that mid tower down so he can start helping his Nasus if that's what he chooses to do. Uh, set up that tower, use some of the uh, strength that Azir passive has. Kevin Tran and Vilbert in the mid lane trying to uh, oh. <laughs> cheeky little Lee Sin play there. Typical. Oh, I was saying earlier, he plays Lee Sin the way I play Lee Sin, and that's just a farm heavy Lee Sin, which does not work at yeah. all. Uh, if you don't know how to play Lee Sin, you just farm because you feel like, oh my god, I'm so behind, I just gotta keep farming. Uh, and that's just the way that he won and won. I don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh... I don't know, it's, it's hard to say if he could have made a lot more happen here because obviously Azir was pushed in so far, yeah. uh, Nasus was having such a hard time, but I definitely feel like he could have picked more fights with the Jarvan in his yeah. uh, in his own jungle. So. Absolutely. Uh, early game power spike missed, absolutely, but we'll have to see if he's a good enough Lee Sin to help in those team fights. I think Vladimir when played on the same level can do fairly well against Azir kind of like a good answer unfortunately Vladimir isn't played that often and I don't know what it is about Vladimir maybe like I, don't, I just challenger and diamond people know more about Vladimir than I do but uh, he's not played at all ever like ever in any competitive scene or anything at all but he doesn't do that bad he's not a horrible champion yep and uh he is doing pretty well on cs considering how low his tower is he's been pushed the entire time has done okay Ooh, look at that synergy between braum and lucian of course uh so easy to stack up that passive and mid lane tower going down for red mercy that means he will be able to proc his passive up there and uh start just the that sandwich like you're talking about Absolutely, that means Jarvan's gonna have to come to mid lane and answer, but Melis and Kleptomaniac are doing fine on their own. If you see in the top lane, Jax is like barely stepping over the line. Um, let's take a quick look. Oh, the camera did it for me. He was, I think he was freezing the lane earlier, but look at his CS count. He's, he's got a huge, huge amount of CS. He's only combating Ezreal here, who I think has like a perfect CS mojo going on. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's... It's interesting to see Kara going for that Triforce first. I guess she really just wants to, or he really just wants to uh, be able to duel the Jax, but you can see it's not really the case. Still good return damage. Unfortunately, Kara taken way lower than uh, the trade happened. Oh, great dodge from Melis. Really showing her ADC prowess. The ultimate from Braum landing on no one, but still slowing down Kevin Trent. Bloody hero. Looks like he wants a piece of the pie, but coming in a little bit too late. Pick up that kill. Here comes... Viber and Red Mercy, the teleport from Jax, they really want to make something happen. The tele <laughs> Helicopter came and the war was already over. A um, little bit lackluster, but the dragon is still... A Jax can solo while everyone else can just poke away, poke everyone out. Um, yeah, and Nas is now TPing into the fight. Hopefully there's going to be a dragon goes over to blue side. They're going to continue the fight. Cataclysm going down onto Azir. Kara stuck in the middle of things. A Hugh boy kind of in a wrong place at the wrong time. Boxstripe and Kleptomania are going to focus their attention to devastate on Ezreal. Boxstripe using his... I don't know what he was doing in the middle of the fight there. But I think his team was completely gone and he had not realized what had happened. Kleptomaniac is all alone here. Here comes Jax from the other side hoping to get a pick onto Red Mercy. Not a backs off and Braum does manage to fall so dragon for two 
kills. Yeah, superior team fighting coming out from the side of Red Mercy's team here. Uh, even though they do have that Nasus who's so far behind, it just doesn't really matter overall as a unit. They're fighting better and they're coming ahead on these fights. Uh, no dragons, unfortunately, on their side yet, however. Uh, so that is Jax with that increased damage already. Absolutely. All he needs is leveling up his boots. Gonna get a little bit of more of that movement speed, which will synergize with the Trinity Force and will make him trade and escape a lot faster. Um, but blue side looking strong after... Uh, sorry, red side looking strong after a rough start against the blue side with those Jarvan ganks. Azir finding his footing and got the assist to lead his team to victory. And Lee Sin, I honestly do, do not agree with the two kills on Lee Sin, but what, what, what can I say? What, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. I'm not Lee Sin. Yeah, thankfully, because Lee Sin has chosen to go towards that sight zone, the kills will transfer into Vision, which is a good advantage for the rest of his team as well. And uh, unfortunately, not many wards down from them yet, but I do expect that to change as they do try and... Uh, use the advantage they've gotten in the mid lane, getting that tower down, and trying to take over the opposing team's jungle. You can see they're already starting to move down towards that bottom lane, but because they don't have that vision control, the opposing team is well aware. Bloody Hero uh, using that Wraith Smite, trying to uh, keep the vision up in his jungle in terms of control. I believe that a lot of rotations have happened in the bot lane because Melus is probably a top picked they're trying to pick on Melis, to be honest with you. Um, they're trying to get rid of her mojo. They don't really care about Jax, because he's just going to get big on his own. But they really want to target Melis and kind of screw around with her confidence so that late game, she's not going to be able to perform as well as she can. It's kind of like the same thing, how Jarvan started off with one of his ganks against Azir, which worked out pretty well. But I guess I'm mistaken, but they're focusing a lot of attention over to Jax now. Three people in that top lane probably just want to get that turret down. Um, but the fight breaks out into bot lane. Mel is falling dangerously low. The double gap coming out onto Devastator. He's going to be able to survive a lot of that damage. Kleptomaniac with the great save. But it looks like he's probably going to fall down here. Oh my god. That weird looking Q. That second weird looking Q. Turns out into a weird looking double kill. Yeah, and there's nothing more Red Mercy could ask for from his team. That will be three outer towers going down unless Box Stripe and his jungler have something to say about that in the bottom lane. Devastated and Kevin Tran trying to get out of there. Box Stripe flashing manages to ult onto Kevin Tran. The Kevin's probably going to fall here. If they're not going to get the kill that they should onto Ezreal, they're not going to get the kill that they would have wanted. But you got to be happy with what you have. Hugh Boy getting completely bullied with no answer, not being able to do anything. Had to build up Vamp Scepter just to sustain a little bit in lane. And I think Nas is at that point where he can sustain a lot in the lane. Uh, I think his life steal scales as he levels up, and he's level 11, so he should have that second level, second scaled life steal. And uh, I would have liked to seen Lee Sin smite the wolf for that vision, but. Just, I'm just picking on this Lee Sin no, the entire that's, game. That's absolutely true. That would have been the proper play. Uh, whoever maybe it wouldn't have <laughs> saved them here without smite there. All the same. He would have he would have safeguarded to the minions anyways, yeah. right? So yeah, for sure. I'm just picking on him. I I I feel like I, I just I'm really judgmental of Lee Sin's is because if you're Lee Sin is just so skill inclined. If you can't if you're not skillful on Lee Sin, you just can't play him. Like even if you're challenger and you pick up Lee Sin, it's just, like you're not you're not gonna be that great. You're probably gonna be a gold level Lee Sin. Yeah. Very true. And uh, you know, I have to say, I think the Jarvan and the, the Vladimir are having trouble keeping up to Red Mercy as he moves his team around the map. They, unfortunately, like, they go bottom lane and they only pick up one kill. It doesn't really matter. They uh, they lost the advantage they had down there. Now they are very close to losing that tower as well. And all the same while, uh, a lot of action is going down to top lane, which they weren't able to back up their team with. Uh, and I mean, that seems to be a big problem here, however. Box Strike is slowly starting to build up some AP. He will uh, increase the damage. Everyone else on his team does, of course, when he drops that all. So uh, not the end of the world. But yeah, like you said, Nas is also very strong. Going that uh, turning the course first, just really trying to be able to duel against that. Trying to duel against that Jax. I don't think it's very possible to do against that Jack, but he's trying and he had support from his team to do that. Jarvan coming in for a gank, uh, 
lots of high priority targets in that bot lane for people. Azir split pushing in the top lane. He wants to farm to get huge. I know yeah. that's probably what his goal is. Honestly, that is a bit of a mistake. They should have Nasus up there. He's got TP available. There's no reason Azir should be in the top lane while Nasus is down here. Azir already is very strong. Sure, this gold will help, but there's a fight oh, anyways. Oh, the hook onto Bloody Hero. Nasus is going to engage, but actually he's going to turn around. The oh, lots of damage onto Bakshite, forcing to pull out of there. Here comes Huey. He wants the kills. He wants the revenge for his team. Pops the ultimate to tank through the turret. He's going to fall dangerously low here, but he manages to leap strike out of tower range and great cataclysm from Jarvan to clean up that fight. Yeah, but here comes Lee Sinning the Q. Lee Syndrome, my body, my body's telling me no. Um, and I mean, that's the same story as what happened level one. We also saw Azir base from the start of the map, rather, uh, he based from the top of the map and decided to make his way down there ASAP. They really hurt not having him, not only the shot calls in the fight, but of course Azir is so strong. We'll see if he's able to do a 1v3 here. Brand or uh, uh, Brahm Ultimate is up. Can he kite away? The teleport coming in from Nasus. I think he really wants a piece of this. He's going to wither Box Stripe right away. Box Stripe is positioning this game as a little bit klutzy. Uh, going to get the kill off the Box Stripe. Uh, going to continue the chase. Mel is getting completely des. Oh my god, that was some kind of surf wave from Ezreal. Great snipe there. Malice is going to get that. Wither is the bane of all ADC's existence. Yeah. Nasus, oh my god, here comes Huey getting the kill into Red Mercy. That's great stuff. A little bit of a lack of communication, it seems like, from Red Mercy's team, but of course, a double bust onto a Nasus with a Wither. Very close hook there. Could have been another kill for Nasus potentially. I want to see Red Mercy grouping up with his team a little bit better. I think he needs to uh, control the flow of this game. The actually gold advantage has dropped significantly. And they've actually lost two towers now as well. I personally feel like the morale of blue team is falling a little bit. Jax's morale hasn't fallen, but I think with Melis, in the past five minutes, she's been killed twice, been caught out twice, and that's gonna really harp on her confidence a little bit. And she's gonna I know that she has a strong voice on team plays as well as clots. And I think both of them getting caught out is gonna really <laughs> Let's uh, sweep that pink ward and uh, get rid of it after. But uh, as I was saying earlier, confidence is important for the team. And I think getting caught out is going to really lower that confidence. Yeah, in terms of vision, it's also uh, definitely in the favor of the red team. Bloody looking for an engage, but not able to find it. Kevin Tran missing a few hooks here and there. We've seen that in one of the previous games with Red Mercy. Not exactly the best Thresh player, but still making decent plays for his team. He has four assists lined up for himself as opposed to the one assist on Braum's side. Um, the synergy between the ADC and the support may be there on blue team, but uh, as for making the plays, it's not all that there. Jax is really going to have a hard time deciding who he wants to focus in this team fight because Ezreal and uh, Azir are getting really big. Yeah, and I mean, Jax also needs to decide what he wants to do this game. He looks like he wants to split push, but with the group coming out from Red Mercy's team, and then of course, Nax is transitioning into the bottom lane, he doesn't have the time or the luxury to stay up in that top lane. However, he could find a flank here onto Red Mercy and his team. Melis doing the auto attacks, Justice almost getting the stun onto Kevin Tran. Jax cleaning up very nice. Azir landing a great alt with the positioning, not allowing Blue Team to really get in there. And Azir is just going to poke from the back line. This is ridiculous. Ezreal and Azir are having a field day while Lee Sin is taking up all the damage. This is exactly the fight that they want. And Azir and Ezreal are just chilling with Ice Cube at George Brown right now. Ice. That's not what I was going to say. I was going to say Azir <laughs> is so freaking broken, man. Just how strong that ultimate is. Didn't even have his Ezreal behind him in that little nook, but had he, that would have been like an impervious wall to anything that uh, Jax and his team could have thrown with him. I mean, geez, that champion is just too strong, and I really think it was a huge mistake to not ban it out here. They banned out the Zed instead. That's what you had missed. They had banned out Zed. Twisted Fate and Lysandra against ah. Red Mercy's team. I didn't um, know that he actually played Twisted Fate as well. Uh, that's a crazy amount of threat on three very, very strong champions. Uh, Red Mercy obviously just can't ban him out, guys. Absolutely. And 
Azir is definitely one of those picks that's been banned in solo queue as well by the challenger and diamond players. Damn. Yeah, I've been in every single game. Yeah. It's definitely really, really OP. And it's OP on Dominion too. Fun fact, stream. Uh, Zir is the only champion that can get out of the starting zone by using his WE WE. And he Very can capture OP. a turret before the game even starts. Very OP. Uh, and what else is OP is getting caught out. Vibert <laughs> trying to uh, re re save his team, redeem his team. Uh, Devastated got caught. He needs to get some sort of steal here. He is Lee Sin. He's got the potential. Will he be able to get it? Go now. Mm. Trigger figure wasn't all that there. I think he was really afraid of the threat in the pit. Um, but uh, blue team picking up this bear and going to give them that momentum that might snowball a little bit, a few objectives in their favor. Dragon up in one minute. That's going to pick up a, a... Is that a fourth dragon for blue team that they're going to pick up in the next minute? Uh, if they are able to lock it down, then yes, that would be the fourth dragon, which is... Uh, Pretty damn scary place to be in if you're on Red Mercy's team. These guys need to uh, start exerting themselves better on the map. These team fights are not going uh, in the way that they so hope. Sure, they picked up the inhibitor there, but that's not that great unless they get to uh, either set up there or set up somewhere else with that Azir Tower and kind of use the strength of their team five to have to reduce the potential for them to get caught out again and lose this game, uh, which is something they can't afford. With the introduction of Azir, I feel like a siege comp has been born. Az Azir just has the perfect kit. It's not even a poke comp anymore, it's a siege comp. It's forcing your oh, enemies. Here we go. It looks like we got an engage. The perfect ultimate to deny that Jarvan. And here comes the teleport from Jax. Um, he's going to get poked out a little bit by Azir, but they're going to catch out this Red Mercy and completely decimate him. Jax on a killing spree. 9 3 and 3. Huge presence in this game, and that's going to be a push down the mid lane. This is perfect situation for blue team. Yeah, Box Stripe and his team are equipped with that Baron as well, which will make this siege very easy for them. They've got a Jax, so they can shred that tower, no problem. No ultimate from Lee Sin means no kill, no even potential to go in. We'll see where they go with this Baron. I think they should continue to siege mid. They've got 15 seconds on Red Mercy. They decide to go towards that Dragon and to lock down that fourth and uh, ever so potent closer to that fifth uh, dragon stack. If they manage to get Baron again with the fifth dragon, they are probably going to close out this game. That would mean bad news bears for uh, Red Mercy's team, but that doesn't mean it's over yet. This game is fairly close with the gold lead, not even more than 200 gold. Um, it's, yeah, it's like, it's like 200 gold. It's not even that much. And uh, if even if Red Mercy's team gonna it's get it's actually dead even, they just switched now right there. Now yeah. it's, it's like it's literally dead even. It depends who these creeps go to. <laughs> oh man, Viber getting caught out. And now it's gonna put the fa oh now we're even. Oh my god, it's like watching. I don't even know what I'm watching anymore. It's like yeah. what is what is the word I'm looking for, Muskie? Uh, <laughs> the stocks. Pro yeah, that that works. That yeah. works. Whatever. Ever I'll take it. I'll sure. take it. I'll take it. Um. Maybe like a kid's soccer game where they all don't know how to play soccer and it's just yeah, going or, back uh, and forth. A very terrible Raptors game, something like that. Just that works too, but uh, a lot of my sports media teachers have huge hard ons for uh, Toronto teams. It happens. It happens. Unfortunately, if I've se I, I saw an NBA map once and Lakers is like the biggest picked NBA team ever yeah, like yeah. it's just like I've seen that map yeah. as well it is very cool yeah back to League of Legends uh, where C9 is actually the most contested team for NALCS yeah you guys uh, <laughs> better get on that fantasy draft I actually have uh, who did I pick up I picked up Sneaky, I think. And one of my very good. fantasy LCS. Because he's consistent. Somebody told me if you want to be good in fantasy LCS, yeah. you got to pick consistent players. And can, I, uh, can I pick Red Mercy for my LCS team? I don't think he's on a team. Unless they draft him onto Winter Fox Gaming. Um, oh, Melis. What's going on here? Braum going to be here to back up his girl or guy. Whatever mode you want to take. Real life or in game. But Red Mercy is here. They might be looking for some kind of fight. Banshee's Veil onto Jax. He's not looking for that poke anymore. He doesn't want to be a part of that. 
That's really good pickup for him against yeah. to counter that Azir, counter that Nasus magic damage that's there, and counter that little fraction of Ezreal magic damage as well. He is very big with those three items. A full item ahead of... Uh, oh, he's got that giant spot now as well. Full three, almost four items ahead of that Nasus. So just a huge threat on that Jax. So farmed, so strong. And of course, with that fourth dragon as well, just a crazy threat this game. Uh, I do want to say that Red Mercy and his team definitely have the potential to win these fights. Azir is so freaking strong. They just haven't really utilized the strength of... Red Mercy, they keep getting caught out and not finding the fights that they want. And uh, Box Stripe, of course, with that Zonius has become a, a frontline threat of his own, amplifying the damage that Jax and the rest of his team do. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is higher elo and trinkets. Now, those two topics alone, they, they, they probably can't have that much depth. But every high elo player I've seen is Rocked Clairvoyance. Uh, not very, not seen very often by a lot of low elo players, but Azir looking to make really extended pokes with his clairvoyance, or try to find a position where he can sneak in to get that enemy team. Yeah, it's definitely true, especially with Baron coming up in the next minute 30. These teams definitely need to uh, adjust the way they are playing with this vision. And, uh, definitely need to. Ooh, find something. Looks like Kevin Tran's going in for an engage. Looks like we might have our own little bit of a sandwich party here. Box Stripe falling dangerously low. So is Kleptomaniac. The Zanya's coming out from Box Stripe. Here comes Jarvan to help out. Takes out that Azir. That's going to create the fight that they really want. Here comes Hugh Boy. He's going to clean up here. Jarvan with the double kill. is trying to get big, but like a riot shield, sometimes riders just take way too much more than they can chew. And Hugh Boy taking that, or Malice taking that kill. This is the fight that they need. And this is looking really, really salty for Ooh. Red Mercy. That flash is Counter Strike. But Hugh Boy taking, mm. taking a little bit low. Yeah, had he hit that last Mystic shot, it probably would have taken him down. And I gotta say, Red Mercy once again actually caught out without using his summoner spells or ultimate. Just absolutely getting wrecked in these team fights. He took the lantern in and got very deep in. Eight of Vlad ultimate to the face, and then had Bloody Hero 89 just training him on that Jarvan. And like I said, once again, Red Mercy isn't able to contribute enough to these fights. If they have an Azir, you need to play around it. He's the most broken champion in the game, arguably. And that addresses what I talked about at the beginning of the game. Azir, Red Mercy, whatever you want to call it, has a lot of weight on his shoulders to carry his team. Because in the beginning... Nasus isn't going to stop Jax, Lee Sin's not going to stop Jax, Ezreal might help out in the, the killing of Jax, but Azir's really got to be the one to make the decisions and be in the right place at the right time, and he hasn't been doing that either with his positioning or his spells. Baron attempt potentially for Red Mercy and his squad here. If they can set up for the fight, it'll be good. Box Stripe going in real aggressive. Very, very aggressive pathing from Box Stripe. He is Vladimir. Very similar to the way that Lissandra can play aggressive, but my god, that must have been a little bit scary for him. I, I gotta say, I don't think he's expecting to walk into a full team like that. I think that's gonna be... His, that's his play style, and that gives birth to a new punt. Because he's very clotsy. Yeah, I do... <laughs> I do uh, identify with that pun quite a bit. Uh, considering the amount of face checks that we have seen today, even from challenger level players. Yes, so, absolutely. No one is immune to the clotsiness. Absolutely. Or Garenitis. Or Garenitis. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Down towards that dragon. This might be the fifth dragon yeah. for Jarvan. If he can manage to steal it, it's getting dangerously low. He should EQ now. He's going to manage to not steal it. I changed my words in that sentence there. Nas is going to focus the Melis in the corner. Here, Jax sh should be around here in the fight somewhere. He's focusing that Azir. Melis manages to get out. Ezreal going to kill that Jarvan. But Hugh Boy refocusing. I think Azir. And wow. This fight is getting a little bit messy here. A little bit sloppy. But Kleptomaniac getting a three-man knockup. That's going to be what they need to finish this fight. Oh, wow. Azir repositioning with his soldiers. They're going to continue to chase. Melis is probably going to pick off Kevin Tran. He tries to hook to the Raptors. But manages to fall. Leeson going to finish off that Brahmin. Wow, Hugh Boy found finds out where Azir has been hiding his terrorism base and manages to kick him out.
<laughs> and that's game, guys. <laughs> Just incredible mechanical outplays coming out from the blue side there. Well, well deserved win playing against Red Mercy in his team. I mean, Red Mercy, they had the potential to win it. They had the Azir, but at the end of the day, just, I mean, crazy nice mechanical plays coming out from everyone, including Boxstripe. Uh, he was in a position to die there, but just pulled right underneath that hook. And, uh, I mean, that's what happens.